The challenge of examining a patient with brachial plexus injury lies in localization of the lesion. First of all, proper exposure of the upper trunk. Take notes of the posture of the upper limb and any muscle wasting. Look at the patient's face and check for Horner syndrome, which is characterized by meiosis, ptosis, anhydrosis, and anophthalmos. Look at the neck for any evidence of bruising, swelling, and look at the clavicle in particular for any deformity. Look at the patient's back, and the assessment of muscular power does not involve only strength testing, but also involves inspection and palpation of the muscular contraction. Can you stroke your shoulders up? Don't let me push them down. Checking for levator scapulae and trapezius. Trapezius is innervated by spinal accessory nerve. This is not a nerve from the brachial plexus, but it is an important donor nerve in the reconstruction. Next, can I get you to bring your shoulder blades together? Checking for contraction of the rhomboids and relax. The traditional test for winging of the scapulae is by wall press test. In patients with upper roots injury, they will have difficulty elevating the arm. A modification will be moving the patient's arm up and getting the patient to push against your hand and at the same time observe for any evidence of winging. Next, get the patient's arm up. Can you push my hand down and observe for contraction of latissimus dorsi? Another way of checking for it is by making the patient to make a cough. Next, we proceed to checking for myotomes. Can you bring both shoulders up? Keeping up there. Don't let me push them down. This is C5. And at the same time, take note of the deltoid muscles. Now push me down. This is C6, 7, 8. In patients with concurrent shoulder injury, elevation of the arm may be difficult. A modification of deltoid testing is by putting one hand onto the deltoid muscle, focusing on the posterior parts, and the other hand on the elbow, and asking the patient to push the elbow backwards while you feel for the contraction of the muscle. Thanks. Can you put your hands on your hips and push down? Now look at the contour of the anterior axillary fold. Specifically focus on the clavicular heads of the pec major. This head of the muscle is innervated by the lateral pectoral nerve, which is a branch from the lateral cords. In contrast, the sternal head of pec major is innervated by the medial pectoral nerve, which is a branch from the medial cords. These two uh, heads of pec majors are useful in localizing any infraclavicular lesions. Can I get you to bring both hands up, bring it up there, and don't let me push them down. Put your hands by your side and push your hand out. Put your hands on your belly, bring your elbows out, and checking for rotator cuff muscles. Next, Bend your elbow up towards you. That's C5-6 for elbow flexion. Push me away. C7-8 for elbow extension. Now keep your arm straight to localize the supinator and pronator teres. First of all, can I get you to turn your palm inwards? Pronation, C7-8. Now can you do the opposite? Supination, C6. Cock your wrist up, wrist extension, which is mainly C6. Push me down, wrist flexion, mainly C7. Grip my hands really tight. This is a composite movement to check for C8. Now, bring your, spread your fingers out. Don't let me push them together. Finger abduction, T1. That completes muscular assessment for the upper extremity. Always compared to a normal area. This is normal. 10 out of 10 is normal, zero being no sensation. And then proceed to check the dermatome in a systematic fashion. 
C5, C6 from this whole area, C6, C7, C8, T1, and T2. Tinel sign. I'm going to tap on your neck and it may be a bit uncomfortable. And let me know if there's any shooting pain or pins and needles going down your arm. Feel for the radial pulse and complete the examination by checking the reflexes of the upper limb.